Uh, hi everybody, my name is Nala El Said. I'm in the Department of Computer Science and I'm going to talk to you today about medical image compression. Here is the outline of my talk. I'll start by the definition of medical image compression problem followed by the description of the health application areas and then I'll go to the literature review on the image compression in general and then I'll move on to the progress to date in medical image compression uh, with a proposed model uh, with some examples of computer science problems to be solved and finally my insights and in reflection. So the definition of medical image compression uh, as described by Huang in his book PAX and Imaging Informatics is uh, to, to reduce the size of the image with the goal of decreasing uh, the transmission time and the storage space. But uh, the compressed image may compromise its original quality and hence affects its diagnostic value. And here comes the real question, which is how much compression can be used before it affects the diagnostic value? So the problem is the trade-off between the compression ratio and the diagnostic value of the image. Uh, some of the application areas of uh, compression is teleregiology. Uh, and of course it is the transmitted, uh, the transmitted images uh, to remote sites through the computer network. And the other application area is the development of PACS that uh, stands for Picture Archiving and Communication Systems. As you know that a typical hospital might generate on the order of 1,000 gigabytes of image data per year. These huge volumes of digital images acquired by different modalities like CT, MRI, uh, mammography provided the motivation for the development of PACS in order to provide a mechanism for the digital image management. Now I'll go through the literature review on uh, image compression. Uh, the first uh, terminology here is compression ratio which is simply the computer space required to store the original image over the computer space required to store the compressed image and here is a simple example showing uh, compression ratio 4 to 1 uh, using uh, 512 times 512 times 8 image so it can require or uh, occupy a space of just 528,000 bit storage so we save 25 percent of the original image space when we are talking about compression there are two main camps the first is lossless compression and the second is lossy compression. Uh, by lossless compression also it is known as error-free or reversible where there is no information lost in the decompressed image and uh, by this uh, type of compression we can achieve modest compression ratios from 2 to 1 to uh, uh, 4.8 to 1 and uh, it allows for exact recovery from the, for, from the compressed image. Uh, why the lossy compression also known as irreversible and in this type of compression there is some information lost as uh, the compressed image is just uh, an approximation of the original image and it reduces the storage requirements uh, as it can reach 10 to 1 to 50 to 1 and actually we are interested in this type of compression uh, as we can reach higher compression ratios and um, uh, but the radiologists are concerned about uh, the, uh, are concerned about uh, the legal consequences of using this type of compression uh, as it might uh, uh, affect their career by, uh, by, by doing a, an incorrect diagnosis based on a lossy compressed image. And here is a simple uh, a schematic diagram of the compression model. Uh, the first step in this model is the image transformation where we transform the image to a domain more appropriate for compression than the spatial domain like uh, discrete wavelet transform or discrete uh, cosine transform. And the next step is the quantizer when we try to eliminate some of the coefficients uh, that are lower than a, a certain threshold and this is only in the lossy. In the lossless we don't use the quantizer. And the last step is the symbol coder that tries to use uh, the information theory concepts to code the image so we have the compressed image. And the decoder is actually the opposite of the encoder. Uh, one of the important uh, types of compression is JPEG as it, uh, it is adopted by DICOM that stands for Digital Imaging and Communication Medicine. 
uh, and JPEG stands for Joint Phot Photographic Expert Group. It is voted as international in 1992, and it is both lossy and lossless, and we are interested in the lossy, of course. And the JPEG, the lossy JPEG, uses a discrete cosine transform plus run length Hoffman coding, while the uh, lossless uh, JPEG is based on uh, an algorithm uh, developed by HP. Uh, the first step uh, in uh, the JPEG algorithm is to divide the image into eight times eight sub-blocks, and these, uh, each of these sub-blocks is transformed using VCT, uh, so we'll have a block like that, and uh, then uh, an ordering algorithm is applied uh, to the output of this, uh, so w it will result in long runs of zeros that can be eliminated through the quantization process. And so we'll have our JPEG image. Uh, the next uh, algorithm I will discuss here is the JPEG 2000, uh, and it is said to be outperforming JPEG. And the first step in the JPEG 2000 is the image tiling, which also uh, uh, is a division of the image into small tiles. And it is, by the way, it is optional. And the next step is the wavelet transform. As we can see here, it's a two-level dyadic wavelet decomposition of the MRI of the, of the brain. Uh, one advantage of using the JPEG 2000 is the ability to encode the region of interest with superior quality. Here is uh, the region of interest if, is the face of Lena, and as we can see, it is uh, with superior quality while it is compressed. There are some uh, other uh, promising algorithms that will, I will not discuss here, like uh, set partitioning in hierarchical trees that is based on the discrete wavelet transform as well, and uh, motion picture encoding group, uh, expert group, and also uh, MJ2, which is based on JPEG 2000, but in 3D. So what is the effect of the lossy compression on the medical imaging? There are so many artifacts associated with the lossy compression. One of them is the blocking artifacts, which uh, manifest themselves in the, in the form of small square blocks all over the image. And here is an example. As you can see here, the blocking artifacts that is, uh, that is more noticeable in the JPEG than the JPEG 2000. But on, in higher compression ratios, it also appears in the JPEG 2000. Uh, the other artifact is a blurring artifact, which means that the image is smoother than originally, and uh, it is more uh, uh, obvious in the JPEG 2000, as you can see here. Although the shape is retained, but uh, the uh, structure of the uh, the structure of the uh, anatomy is lost. And the last artifact is the distortion around the edges, as and it is actually both in, in JPEG and in JPEG 2000. And, oops. and actually, uh, it, the, the edges uh, are not uh, correctly, uh, uh, if it was here, the edges are not, <laughs> the edges are not, uh, are not really uh, uh, shown by the JPEG and the JPEG 2000. It's very lossy. <laughs> And so, as we have a lot of artifacts, we need to uh, measure, to have some kind of measurements or evaluation methods for those, uh, for the quality of the image. And there are some qualitative measurements and some uh, qua quantitative measurements and some qualitative measurements. Uh, one of the quantitative measurements is the normalized mean square error. Uh, it just tries to find the uh, error between the compressed image and the original image and it is considered as global measurement of the quality of the reconstructed image and does not provide information on the local measurement. And the peak signal to noise ratio is just a similar, uh, a similar algorithm to the normalized mean square error. While for the qualitative measurements, uh, one of the most dominant methods is the receiver operator characteristic in which um, the observers with expertise in diagnosing the object disease participate as observers to review the images. And it is uh, the, the reliability of the results of this type of uh, measurement is considered to be questionable. Uh, and there is a simple uh, me method uh, that uses just ranking of images from low to high 
uh, compression by asking a cross-section of people. And finally, the just noticeable difference, uh, which is a recent method. It requires the viewer to make a binary forced choice decision to which uh, w uh, one of the uh, presented uh, images is the compressed image. And so we need to reach, uh, to reach the point at which the image is just compressed uh, and the compression is just noticeable. Uh, here is some of the progress to date in the medical image compression. Uh, I will not review all of that, but some of the important points here is just that, that three different studies in 2003 uses uh, receiver operator characteristic concluded that JPEG compression of CT images in different parts of the body cannot exceed 10 to 1. So we can deduce from that that 10 to 1 is the maximum achievable lossy, compressed, uh, lossy compression ratio that we can use on CT images. Uh, also, another study in ultrasound in 2002 conducted by persons and all found that ultrasound scans uh, compressed with JPEG at compression ratios 9 to 1 are indistinguishable from the original. And the uh, first author in this study is using uh, JPEG uh, compression with the compression ratio 9 to 1 on all the, the ultrasound scans for 12 months right now. And here is another uh, study conducted by Fuss. Uh, he compared the diagnostic quality of images compressed using JPEG 2000 to that using JPEG. And he, uses, he used in this study uh, five observers. And uh, the, the, gray, the gray bar represents the JPEG 2000, while the white bar represents the JPEG. And you, as you can see, that uh, JPEG 2000 outperforms JPEG in most of the compression ratios. And I just tried to summarize all, all the current studies or the recent studies, and this is just a little bit of uh, a lot of other uh, studies. As you can see that uh, compression using CT, using ROC, is 10 to 1, as we have just said. Uh, nuclear medicine uh, on uh, using uh, set partitioning in hierarchical trees reaches 90 to 1. And there is also some studies on mammography in 2000 using JPEG that says that uh, the maximum compression ratio can be 62 to 1. So right now I propose a model, uh, a simple model for uh, deciding. Uh, it, sh it should be actually a knowledge-based model, uh, the maximum compression ratio and the compression algorithm. In this model, we enter the image size and the bit depth and the modality if it's a CT, MRI, uh, mammography, whatever, and the body part uh, that is scanned. And actually, the diagnostic subjects should be entered also. And by that, I mean if it's a radiologist or it can be, for instance, a computer-aided diagnostic system. And uh, we, we hopefully get the maximum compression ratio allowed and the compression algorithm. If we have something like that, Probably, legally, the, the lossy compression can be used. And here is a detailed description of this model where the image size and the modality and the body part can decide the compression algorithm and the maximum compression ratio. And this can be fed into the compressor uh, with the image and then can be uh, displayed on a monitor. And uh, the monitor is a speci should be specifically uh, sp should be a, spe a specific monitor with some characteristics uh, that can be uh, a minimum, like, like should be minimum. And then it, it should be evaluated uh, using the measurement method. And if it's a satisfactory, we can save the image. If not, we can uh, estimate a new compression ratio and recompress the image. So some of the uh, computer science problems to be solved uh, that DICOM uh, should adopt different compression algorithms, which actually I, I doubt myself uh, because it's very restricted in uh, adopting uh, the new uh, compression algorithms. And a national study using an average computer system, and by that I mean uh, the average systems like uh, CPU and stuff, but mainly the monitor. Uh, uh, in Canadian hospitals should standardize the maximum compression ratio allowed for the given inputs and the best compression algorithm to be used. 
we can rely on the uh, past studies as well, but uh, I think if we uh, do a, a, unif a unified study using uh, uh, minimal standards, it would be better. And the third point is that compression of images involving the, in computer-aided diagnostic systems for mammography should be investigated as both uh, computer-aided diagnostic systems and compression are still new issues and new research areas. And there were few studies involving the compression of 3D volumes of data. So from that, uh, the insights and reflections, as you can see that JPEG 2000 is much more efficient at uh, uh, image compression compared to JPEG at higher compression ratios. And the degree of research on the use of re irreversible compression in radiology is still in its infancy. Um, and by that, uh, as most of the, uh, of the studies, the past studies, focused on the, uh, the uh, technical aspects of compression and the uh, methods to evaluate the observer rather than to, uh, to study the effect of the compression ratio on the uh, diagnostic value of the image. And finally, the ROC is the most used methodology in previous studies. We need to have uh, mo much more methodologies that can be uh, compatible with something like computer-aided diagnostic systems. And here are my references. Thank you. Twelve. This one? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I know you said the wave will transform this, uh, but I don't, I don't remember you saying how is the wave will transform. Is this two level? Dyadic, yes. I, I, I created that using the MATLAB. Uh, yeah, I created this image using MATLAB. Uh, two level dyadic so transform. The final image would be the one to the right? Yes, of course. This one. Two, yeah, two waveless filters, yes. Any other question? Yes? Uh, the compression algorithm used in nuclear medicine, I think it was, seemed really uh, good. It was, what, 90 to 1, I think? Um, I've never heard of that algorithm before. Why is it so efficient? Why would they use it more? The set partition in hierarchical trees? Uh, it's a new algorithm, but it, well, it is not adopted by DICOM, so uh, not most, of, most of the researchers are getting away from the, re from the algorithms that are not adopted by DICOM. So JPEG and JPEG 2000 are, like most of the researchers, you'll find, you'll find JPEG and JPEG 2000. Uh, but there is a promising area in uh, set partitioning in hierarchical trees as well. What was used to determine the max, though? It wasn't the amount of compression. It was cut off at the point of just noticeable difference, or what? Uh, How did it's they get these are the used the uh, evaluation methods. The subjective, and was the subjective, uh, what kind of technique, you know? Uh, that's a ridiculous I, I, compression ratio. You can't do that on face. Yes, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what, what like, nuclear myths and how, how much it is the resolution of the image. Maybe if it's so big, it would be uh, it can reach 90 to 1, but I'm not sure about this. Uh, I just get the, the results or I've seen the output of these. One aspect of nuclear medicine images is the fact that they're extremely low resolution. And that wow. may be the explanation there. Like if this is a gamma camera image. Oh, yeah. It may not have adequate resolution, and so it doesn't make it any It doesn't difference. make any difference to the observer, maybe. Yeah. But yes. Uh, you mentioned that um, JPEG 2000 supports the regions of interest. Is, is yes. regions of interest used in medical imaging in general? Yeah, sometimes. There. They, like, some parts of the image are of interest to the, uh, to the radiologist and other parts are just, uh, like, out of the scope of the uh, interest. Like, but, the, but the maximum compression ratio only deals with the region of interest? Uh, no, all of these studies are on the, like, this region of interest is a totally new uh, research area, but most of these uh, studies or on, on normal images like full images. So that's what I think. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, 
I just uh, meant by the diagnostic subject, if it's a radiologist, so there, there should be a, a compatible uh, measurement method. If it's a, a, a computer-aided diagnostic system, for instance, it, is, it shouldn't be observed by observer. It should be something uh, computerized as well, because the computer-aided diagnostic system is uh, used by a computer. So by that, I mean it, there should be a decision that, uh, like, correlate which... Uh, which measurement method can be used with the uh, subject. Has anyone used a, uh, any kind of image decision-making algorithm as the uh, test case? In other words, if you have an image and you compress it, uh, you, let's say it's lossless, and you get some level of recognition of features, yeah. and then you deteriorate it with your compression, at what point the algorithm cuts off? Because that removes the issue of observer variability. The algorithm is always going to look at the same data. The, the only uh, algorithms used, that, like uh, that, what I'm, I discussed here, was the quantitative algorithms. And actually, oh, sorry. <laughs> the quantitative algorithms, and actually they are uh, either the normalized mean square error or the signal to no uh, peak signal to noise ratio. And these algorithms, although it, it gives some uh, idea about like the, the correlation between the images, but also it, it does, doesn't give a, a real idea about the, the lost part in diagnosis, like w which part in the image are really lost and, and we cannot detect that the, there is a disease anymore. No, but it, but a, a recognition algorithm, let's say, that was trained to re recognize a certain uh, feature or set of features. Yeah. Segmentation, uh, for instance. That would be looking at the uh, yeah. semantics, if you want, of the image. Yeah, yeah. And uh, has, do you know if anyone's done a study like that? I've never seen something closer to this even. Uh, maybe there are some few studies, but I didn't see a lot of studies on this area. Uh, it's just uh, either to be a decision system or uh, to, to use the normalized mean square error and the peak signal-to-noise ratio. Now you did the, you went through the, that review document of the different uh, yes. approaches. Yeah. And what's your conclusion at the end um, of reading all that in terms of the types of research that need to be done or what's been done so far, the quality of what's been done so far? As a, a part of the insights uh, that I just said that uh, most of the studies are concentrating on the algorithms. And uh, like they are missing a big part on the effect of the of the compression on the diagnostic value of the image, and uh, due to the and this would result in actually there is a lot of hope that most of the people are realizing that right now, and especially the radiologists and the, the uh, physicians as well. Uh, so if we just concentrate on the diagnostic value of the image, it will be a totally new area in the research. Thank you very much. You're welcome.